Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do some masking out of some daisies. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, sketch a pattern with some, um, some daisies. I'm going to sketch it quite lightly using my tried and tested technique of drawing um, fried eggs. So you draw the center petal like that and then depending on whether the flower is facing away from you or towards you, like that. So if you want to see very little at the back and more at the front, you do it like that so that the petals are longer at the front. And then when you want to do smaller ones, you don't really need that. And then we'll just draw in the stems. Like that, and maybe we'll have a, a bud over here for the stem, and then perhaps another one up here. And I won't uh, join the leaves because uh, they're going to come out of the background. I think I'm going to make these ones behind longer on reflection. I'm going to make all of them bigger. It doesn't matter if we've got lots of lines because with the masking fluid um, that will rub off. Okay, so I've got this masking fluid here, which is Molotov. It's in a kind of marker pen, and I'm going to use that for the stems. and the buds. I haven't used this one before. I hope it's going to work. So I'm going to use this for the small ones. I really do hope this is going to work. I'm never sure with masking fluid. Because the thing is, it's a bit worrying because you put so much work into the painting and uh, then if the masking doesn't come off, you're really um, disappointed. Um, so then for the other parts, I'm using this Daniel Smith Artists Marking Fluid and to apply that I'm going to use a brush I did shake that but it feels very thin so I'm going to stir it with a stick And since I've got the stick, 
I'm going to do some blobs. This will add to the background. Right. And then I'll just go over those ones again. And now this one. So this is how you use masking fluid. Basically, you just apply it quite thickly. This, I haven't used uh, Daniel Smith before. I've always used uh, Schmincke or Winsor & Newton, but I couldn't get either of those from Amazon this time when I ran out. Actually, that's not true. I couldn't get the Winsor & Newton because I used to get my uh, things from England and now England isn't in the EU anymore and so it's getting to be really difficult to get hold of stuff from English shops so I'm having to get it from Europe which is much more expensive and the Schmincke masking food was something like $40 for a bottle and I just I balked at that and instead I got this Daniel Smith one. So I don't know, I've never used it before, we'll see. So now that needs to dry. Now this is a method of doing a background which is um, very, what's the word, um, loose. Is that a good word? So you take a big brush, this is a hake, a hake. Um, this is just a cheap one, doesn't have to be anything special. You could use a house painting brush to make any difference. It won't make any difference to whether or not the masking fluid comes off either. Um, we'll see about that. And then you drop in, once that's wet, you then wait for that to dry a little bit and then you drop in whatever colours you want to use in the background. And I'm feeling relatively turquoisely oriented at the moment so I'm going to go for turquoise up here for the sky when you drop it in drop it sort of unevenly and uh, allow it to sort of go up and down a bit at the back there and then choose whatever color you want to put in next to that and um, I'm looking for quinacridone gold. Which I'm going to now drop in fairly liberally. All over. There are so many different ways you can do this. And uh, thing to do is just relax. Oh, you noticed I put in some um, leaves, some indications of leaves. So now I'm picking up some sap green, and I'm just going to put some some of that in loosely. And also, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Ooh. I said a little bit. Well, that will make a statement. And Maybe, maybe a little bit more green here. And then a little bit of quinacridone gold on top of the green so that it doesn't look too synthetic. That looks spring-like instead. 
and then we'll let that dry in the sun. Is it sunny today? So the paint's now dry and uh, I'm going to have a go now at starting to get rid of the masking fluid which is uh, the blue one is not particularly easy to get off but it does come off and for this I do find using a, an eraser is probably the only way of doing it because if you do it with your fingers you're going to put you have to rub so hard that you're going to put a lot of um, grease from your fingers onto the painting and then you're going to have another problem that will arise so it's better to basically use a rubber it's quite a workout I have to say um, so I'm not not terribly impressed with this but anyway that's the way you do it so you have to make sure it's absolutely dry and then the white stuff I'm hoping will come off a bit more easily which it will it's a bit easier um, this is the Daniel Smith one and uh, so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that but I won't force you to watch this and I'll come back in a second once I've got all this cleaned off okay so I've got all of the um, masking fluid off now and so I'm going to come in with some bright yellow into the centers of the flowers to start with so just dropping that in there quite uh, quite intense and this one and a little drop in there and a little drop in there and then I'm going to pick up some quinacridone gold which is a much more orangey yellow and I'm going to put that round one side and then some uh, sepia which is a very dark brown So you've got your three tones, your light, medium and dark. So the light obviously is the yellow, then the gold and then the sepia. So we'll just put that in slightly wiggly and the outside edge. We don't want it to run too much. And if we think that we might need a bit more orange in there, we might wait a minute for that to dry a little bit and then come in with a bit more. Um, so then we're going to start working on um, shadows for the uh, shadows for the petals on the flowers. And I'm going to use um, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to, this is very much a case of less is more. And I'm just going to choose which one's in front and which one's behind so if it's behind it gets quite a lot of shadow if it's in front it doesn't get so much so we just go around choosing who's going to be in front and who's going to be behind and that gives you the shape of the petal so If you touch onto the sepia a little bit, you get a little bit of lead. That's that's really quite a nice thing. Okay. 
and then you're going to just draw some of the shadow out to the middle very finely to indicate the shape of the petals. You don't need very much paint for this. And then we'll go to this one over here. And uh, number three at the top here. This one's a bit further away, so you don't want as much definition. Oh, I forgot one over the back there, didn't I? Look at that. Too much sepia there, so I'm just going to wet that up a little bit and try to pull some of that out. Cover it up with a bit more. We had a bit of a a bleed from. It wasn't. It's not the masking fluid actually. That there. It's the um, it's the turquoise paint. Let that dry, and that'll be okay. Um, all right, so then he needs his petal shadows, and then we want some some petal shadows on these buds. Okay, so now we're going to uh, paint the stems and the um, leaves. So I've got olive green here and I'm just going to trace in It turns out, of course, that I didn't really, really actually need to even mask the stems, but I wanted to try out that masking pen, which uh, is all very well. It's very difficult to get it off. But I suppose it does look, it does give a cleaner line, doesn't it? And then we'll just drop in some some green leaves like this. And uh, 
little bit darker, a little bit more brownish perhaps. I'm going to add a little bit of clinacridone gold to that to make it a little bit more brownish. Um, yeah, we need more shadow on that. And where you've done the masking, you're going to get a variation in the in the colour because it's on top of white, not blue. And then I think I'm going to put some yellow on some of these. Spots. Bit more orange, famous quinacridone gold on there. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And then just some final touches darkening up the background a little bit behind some of the white petals. Do this as much as you like, or as little. One thing you don't want though is to lose the, the freshness. Just try to indicate a little bit the shape a bit better. The other thing you can do also for the shape is to use white gouache just to sort of mend some of the edges if you feel that they're a bit ragged. Do that. You can also replace some of the whites if some of it's gone. Like that. So I think that's done. Thanks very much for being with me. And I hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks very much everyone. Bye!